In the last lecture, we calculated the even and odd parts of a discrete time signal and now in this lecture we will understand what are conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric discrete time signals and we will begin our discussion with conjugate symmetric discrete time signals and to understand this let's take one discrete time signal xn and let's perform the time reversal operation and this will give us a new signal which is x minus n and now we will perform the operation which is known as conjugate so after taking conjugate of this signal we will have a new signal which is x conjugate minus n and now if the obtained signal after these two operations is equal is equal to the initial signal xn then we will say signal xn is conjugate symmetric in nature so this is the condition for a signal to be conjugate symmetric that is after taking the time reversal and the conjugate if you have the same signal then you will say the signal is conjugate symmetric in nature now let's move on to the next type which is conjugate anti-symmetric discrete time signals and in this type if after performing the same two operations that is after performing the time reversal and after taking the conjugate of this signal the obtained signal x conjugate minus n is equal to the initial signal is equal to the initial signal but with negative sign then we will say that the signal xn is conjugate anti-symmetric so this is the condition for a signal to be conjugate anti-symmetric that is after performing the time reversal and taking the conjugate if you get the amplitude reversed initial signal you will say the initial signal is conjugate anti-symmetric so I hope these two conditions are now clear to you and now we will move on to the next part of this lecture in which we will find out the conjugate symmetric part and the conjugate anti-symmetric part all the signals in this case the discrete time signal xn can be represented as the combination of the conjugate symmetric part and the conjugate anti-symmetric part when the signal is conjugate symmetric then the conjugate anti-symmetric part is equal to zero and the signal is equal to the conjugate symmetric part and when the signal is conjugate anti-symmetric then conjugate symmetric part is equal to zero and the signal is equal to the conjugate anti-symmetric part but not all signals are conjugate symmetric or conjugate anti-symmetric there are signals which are neither conjugate symmetric and nor conjugate anti-symmetric and in this scenario you will get non-zero conjugate symmetric part and non-zero conjugate anti-symmetric part now we will try to get the conjugate symmetric part and the conjugate anti-symmetric part let's say this is equation number one and now we will perform the time reversal operation this means we will replace n by minus n we will have x minus n on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have x cs minus n plus x c a s minus n so we are done with the first operation which is the time reversal operation and now we will take the conjugate because conjugate is the next operation and after taking the conjugate on the left hand side we will have x conjugate minus n and on the right hand side we will have x cs conjugate minus n plus x cs conjugate minus n and let's say this is our equation number two 
and in this equation I will make two changes. We know after taking the conjugate and the time reversal of a conjugate symmetric signal we will have the same signal. So x cs conjugate minus n will be same as x cs n. So I will replace I will replace this by x cs n and we know for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal after taking the conjugate and the time reversal we will have negative of the initial signal. This means we can replace x cs conjugate minus n by negative of x cas n. Therefore I will replace this by minus x cas n. So finally the equation number 2 will be x conjugate minus n equal to x cs n minus x cs n. And now I will add equation 1 and equation 2. So let's quickly add the equation number 1 and the equation number 2 and this will give us xn plus x conjugate minus n on the left hand side xn plus x conjugate minus n on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have 2 times x cs n. So from here we can get x cs n. This implies the conjugate symmetric part of signal x n is equal to x n x n plus x conjugate minus n divided by 2. And now we will subtract equation number 2 from equation number 1. We will subtract equation number 2 from equation number 1 and this will give us the conjugate anti-symmetric part of the signal xn and it will be equal to initial signal xn minus x conjugate minus n divided by 2. So in this way we have obtained the conjugate symmetric part of the signal and the conjugate anti-symmetric part of the signal and using these two equations we can easily solve the questions. So now let's move on to one example. In this example signal xn is given and we need to find the conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric parts of signal xn. This means we need to find x csn and x cas n and you can see that to find out the two signals we need xn and we need x conjugate minus n and in the question xn is given so let's quickly calculate x conjugate minus n and for that I will first calculate x minus n and in the last lecture we calculated x minus n and we found it to be 4 1 plus 2j minus 4 minus 5j with 1 plus 2j as the value at n equal to 0. Now let's quickly take the conjugate which will give us our signal x conjugate minus n. We know about the conjugate operation. Whenever you take the conjugate simply change the sign of the imaginary part. For example, here in this case we have 1 plus 2j. 2j is the imaginary part having the sign plus. So plus will now change to minus after taking the conjugate. But here we have 4. Only real part is there. The imaginary part is equal to 0. So there is nothing to worry about. 1 plus 2j will become 1 minus 2j. Minus 4 minus 5j will become minus 4 plus 5j. So we have x conjugate minus n. Now let's find out the conjugate symmetric part. And for this we need to add x n and x conjugate minus n and then divide it by 2. So we are going to get minus 4 minus 5j plus 4. This means minus 5j. 1 plus 2j plus 1 minus 2j is equal to 2. 4 plus minus 4 plus 5j is equal to plus 5j. 
and now we will divide them by 2 and finally we will have the conjugate symmetric part equal to minus 5 by 2j 1 and 5 by 2j so this is the answer and calculation of the conjugate anti-symmetric part is the homework for you is the homework for you so once you have the conjugate anti-symmetric part of signal xn post your answer in the comment section and i will end this lecture here see you in the next one